Hi, this is Anna from The Faithful Dove. I am on Facebook. I am currently not on YouTube. If you would like to find out the hilarious story to that, it's intertwined in my love video, so please give that a listen if you'd like a good laugh. If you want to know why I do this, I've had several tragedies happen to me in my life, with the worst one being last year. I want to point you to the Tragedy Can Motivate You video. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for all my followers and subscribers. Please continue to help me build this channel. Like I said, if you watch the Tragedy Can Motivate You video, you'll know why it's so important for me to build this channel and help everyone around the world. I don't want anybody ever being in a position where they feel alone at all. Anyway, I love you guys so much. And um, just a few more things about me. I, I am 49 years old. I'm not my 20s or 30s. Coming back from, I didn't get COVID, but we got on lockdown. I was living in Pennsylvania. And um, so just like everybody else, physically, mentally, spiritually, building myself back up after that. I am an ordained minister. I have a pastoral counseling certificate. I have over 20 years of experience. I've been on Keen off and on since 2004, and I was called back to all of that very recently. It, it was just, it's just time for me to share what I know. So let's get started. The title is, of course, You Are a People Pleaser If. Not to be confused with You Might Be a Redneck If by Jeff Foxworthy, <laughs> although that's hilarious. Um, it is really hot out today. It's still in its 90s outside. I hope you can't hear the fan and the air conditioning running because it's really hot upstairs where my office is. But today we're going to learn about setting boundaries without guilt because I believe boundaries, or should I say lack thereof or enforcement, lack of enforcement, are the biggest reason why people have low self-esteem, low self-confidence, and lose themselves. End up with people they shouldn't. Everything. It all goes back to your boundaries and enforcing them. Some people have boundaries, they don't enforce them. Other people, most people, I don't even think that you think about your boundaries. And uh, in certain generations, us women were taught to just listen. Listen to the guys, the guys that like my grandma. Listen to the guy, the guy's the boss, no matter if he's right or wrong. And now, like, I feel like we need to find a balance, okay? I want to be an equal partner. I don't want to be someone who is bossed around. I don't want to be someone who is completely passive. I don't want to be the boss in my relationships. But I think the key is setting boundaries and, and enforcing them. Okay, so let's get started. You are a people pleaser if you rarely say no even when you don't want to do something. You go way above and beyond like the girl in this picture. See, she's under the cloud of lightning and she's putting the umbrella over as many friends as she can get and she, she still can't reach them all because you cannot please everybody okay you feel guilty or pressure when or if you say no this is a big one you feel alone when you need help because you try to reach out and the people that you help suddenly they're too busy they don't have time. Oh, this one's a shocker. It hit me a few years ago, and it hadn't happened to me in a long time. But okay, I finally stood up for myself, and I got, <gasps> what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you acting like a bitch? Okay, sorry, but standing up for myself is not acting like a bitch. Having my own opinion is not acting like a bitch. I'm not forcing my opinion on you. I'm not asking you to agree with me. But if I don't want to do something and I say no, my prerogative. Unless, of course, it's something police tell you to do, then you should do it. And then 
if it, if they did it wrong, get them in trouble later. <laughs> never mind, never mind. No, I love police officers. Don't get me wrong. I have a thing, but I love police officers. But I know that a lot of you have experienced some trouble with them and being there are disrespectful people everywhere who treat people wrong. But that's another story. I, I just know that I love everybody I, that's a good person. You know, I love you all. And I pray for the ones that aren't good people. But again, there's another story. Let's get back to what I was talking about. You get a lot done. Yeah. But it's for other people. She says as she looks around her room. And she's very OCD. I'm very OCD. And I haven't gotten a damn thing done for myself. Because I've been busy doing shit for other people. Ooh. I hope Facebook doesn't take my video down for cursing. Anyway. You don't get the same thing in return. You like, you share, you support your friends' businesses, you comment on their things, you go to their parties, but they never have time to come to yours unless it benefits them somehow. Think about it. Yep. Okay. And in those seven things, you can reduce it down to you're a people pleaser if you rarely say no, you go above and beyond, and they don't for you. And they're shocked when you stand up for yourself. Okay. You've got to set boundaries. You've got to start saying no. But how do you do that without feeling guilty? Well, guess what? This goes back to counseling when I was abused years ago and I went to counseling for two years. I didn't believe it. It was BS. Okay, look in the mirror every day and say 10 nice things about yourself. Every time he says one bad thing about you, say three nice things about yourself. You know that shit works. At first you're like, I feel stupid. I'm not doing this. And you're... Sometimes you laugh and sometimes you're mad because you do it, but then she encourages you to keep doing it and you keep doing it and suddenly you notice he starts to say something bad about you, he or she, the mean person. You're saying, you're, you're speaking up and saying, I'm a good person. They're saying, you're blah, blah, blah. I'm a good person. It, it really works. It really, really works. So self-talk is a big key to setting boundaries. But again, you need to sit down with a piece of paper, okay, and write down the things that you like, the things that you will not do or will not tolerate. Basically, I will do this, I will not do this. I like It's just likes and dislikes, okay? And sometimes it has to do with emotions, okay? Any of those types of lists are good. And then, th this is why you do this. This is why you do this. Because reading that back to yourself, like, for instance, I will not go places I do not want to go just to please others. I am enough. I am worthy of doing things for myself and things that make me happy. I am not always going to be helping my friend clean her house when I need to clean my house. I want to just sit at home and read a book, and that's okay. I can do that. The things that you like and the things that you don't, the things that you will do and the things that you won't, the things that you won't do and things that you will do. Excuse me just a second. I itch. Setting. Those are your boundaries. Okay. And then, you know, and you can even tell everybody, hey, you know what? I'm learning to take care of better care of myself. I'm setting boundaries and limits. So I'm learning to say no. Okay. And then when they go, what? Come on. What's wrong with you? You're such a party pooper. Don't get mad at that. You want to stay home and read a book? You want to stay home and clean your house? You want to stay home and sleep all day? That's your prerogative. Remember that song? It's my prerogative. Anyway, <laughs> don't get me singing because you'll be probably either falling on the floor laughing or I'll break your eardrums. 
But anyway, so think about it. Think about yourself, okay? It's not wrong to say no. You do not have to, even with your children, you do not have to run them around all day, every day, everywhere. You do not have to have 10 different sports going. And like, oh, Oh, okay, I'm going to tell you the story. Um, with my stepchildren, at one point, they were crossing into other sports, um, wrestling, and then they wanted to do football, and then they wanted to do something. And by the third time, the third one got there, oh my gosh, I was going 24-7. Literally, I was up at 2 in the morning, and I was going to bed at like 12 sometimes. Um, sometimes I would get up at five in the morning and I would go to bed at two. You get the picture. Okay. You're one person. You can't do it all. So if they want to do more than one thing or sports are crossing over into each other, maybe you reduce it and say, look, you know, I'm sorry. I'm one person. You're going to have to choose one over the other. Okay. Choose the one that means the most to you. You know, and if they're in high school, are you going to try to get a scholarship off of this? Which one are you really good at? Which one do you have the passion for? They'll get over it, okay? But it's going to be a while if you have always been like, yes, 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 okay? Over time, trying to do everything for everyone, you think, okay, it's not draining me, it's fine. And you say, oh, it's part of being a parent. Oh, it's part of being this. It's part of being that. It's part of... Well, you know what? It's not. God did not ask you to be everything to everyone. And if you don't believe in God, whomever you believe in, or heck, if you don't believe in anything, who asked one person to do 20 different things? No one. So just say no to people pleasing. And this is a daily struggle for me as well. But I get to the point, and I'm so stubborn. And you know what? I got some great advice from a young girl I was watching on, uh, I was watching her on YouTube. She randomly popped up and it was what I needed to hear. She said when she gets stressed out, it's usually because she's trying to do too much at once. And even if she's not, even if it's just one thing and it's not working out, our nature is to try to find out the answers. We want to know yesterday what the answer is. And this has gotten worse in, our gen in the newest generation because we have instant access to all the answers. But guess what? Having all the answers doesn't make it any better. My, my work, I can give people the answer. I can give them a good answer, but it doesn't make them stop asking the question. Why? Because it's down here. And usually with relationships, it has to do with a boundary was not set. Okay? You know what you need inside. Live by that. And at the end, I just wanted to say, um, I got these dream cards, and they're pretty cool. And this one says, be curious in your everyday life. React with interest to everything new life presents to you. Curiosity will open your mind to possibilities. So, doing stuff for everyone else is limiting yourself. It's draining your life battery. Your heart, you just feel like, oh my gosh. It's, it causes anxiety. It lowers your self-esteem. Even if you did the right thing. Say, well, I love children and I couldn't have any of them my own but when I noticed children were their mother had abandoned them she was using drugs I stepped in okay I stepped in and helped raise those kids and I would not change it for anything I didn't think I got anywhere with them because it seemed like they were really out of control but apparently I did because now those kids are grown up and the one with the most problems spouts off things I said as if it is his own. And his brother will tell me, you know, he's taking credit for what you said. And I said, it doesn't matter as long as he got it. 
he grew up good. But I left because I had given everything, okay? I left and it wore me down, okay? And it wore me down emotionally. This is why you cannot be everything to everyone. I will never regret putting myself into that situation because those kids deserved a chance. Okay. But at the same time, there's consequences to everything. When you're giving everything of you to everyone else and you're not self caring, you're not taking care of yourself, when you're putting everybody else's needs before your own, then you're sitting there at 49 or, you know, whatever age, and suddenly you're just like, wow, I'm so tired. And then things start to happen, and the boundaries, if you once had them, you're just letting things slip by because you're too tired. You're worn out. You need to balance things out so that during life, you have enough self-confidence, energy, and ability, and enough fight in you to continue to say no to things that are wrong, okay? Not that I was doing anything or letting it, okay, maybe I was. But watch the Tragedy Can Motivate video. I'll tell you more about that later. But you just, you can't be everything. People have to fix themselves. You know how the Jiminy Cricket was the conscience for the kids? You know, adults, you, you know that thing where I say sometimes you have to let a kid, they're very stubborn. Sometimes you have to let them go through something so that they learn on their own. You can't do everything for them. Well, that's true with adults too. It's not your responsibility to do what an adult who is capable of doing themselves. Okay. If they're there in mind, they're there. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they're, no matter what, unless they emotionally or physically can't do something for themselves, that's different. And then, even then, those of you who are caregivers, you know, like in, in my family, when our family gets older, um, we try to allow them to live in their home and we try to take care of them. But when my mom was terminally ill, hospice was amazing, okay? Hospice gave us the extension on our rope to be able to enjoy life, the rest of my mom's life with her, okay? We were able to focus on making some final memories with her rather than the stress and see, that's not something you should feel guilty about either. If you're a caregiver, you can ask for help. Because you need something at the end of that rope. You want your last memories with a loved one to be happy. Okay, that's another way that you can wear yourself down is you just not taking your own limits. And sure, you can be pushed past your limits. You could be pushed past your boundaries and you might still be on this earth, but it takes a toll. And do you really want that? Or do you wanna find people and spaces that respect your boundaries and limits? Technically, if you have a good friend, they should be telling you Dude, you're people pleasing. Don't do that. But people also tend to naturally fill in the divots. Okay. Don't go there with the, the cow poop. I heard about that. <laughs> Look it up. Um, but if you have a dip, okay, you're a people pleaser. That's your dip. Okay. There, other people's natural um, thing is to automatically fill it. So they're going to fill it with stuff to please. Don't start it or be none. <laughs> so I'm really sorry this is really long, but I felt like it's really important. And 
I'm going to get off of here now, set those boundaries, make that list, keep it on your refrigerator, carry it around with you, keywords, I am enough. It's my prerogative. If I don't want to do something, I don't have to do something. Okay. You don't have to be mean about it. But it's time for you to not only set those boundaries, but to enforce them. And I'm talking to myself too. You're not, and that includes if you're in a relationship and you're not getting what you need from the other person. Talk to them about it. But don't try to figure out what you can do to make it better. If they're not giving it to you, that's their problem. If it's your emotional needs and they're not giving you, filling your life battery, giving you what you need emotionally. And then, of course, there's the deal breakers. The deal breakers are, even in the Bible it says, in substance abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, it's all deal breakers. Okay, you don't have to stick around for that. Go find yourself someone who... Is not going to push you past your boundaries. Okay? Emotional or physical boundaries. Don't let it happen. No. And as soon as you're seeing, hearing yourself start to... Very important. As soon as you hear yourself start to say, Yes, you did... Going to do something you don't want to. Just say no. Period. And I want to apologize today. My throat is real... Dry... It's weird because we just had that storm and it's yet, it's 38% humidity. So sometimes my words don't, don't come out correctly. But I appreciate it. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Remember to like, follow, and share.